Malinga. You're actually quite new to the island, right? Very new, yeah. Um, got you on March 1st, March. actually, yeah. yeah. And you're supposed to be here for... Okay, so initially, this is the plan, right? So the plan was that um, I was gonna, uh, I was supposed to actually come to, to Bali for about two months, tops, you know, and I said, like, no, I only, only need two months over there. Um, whilst I start um, saving up to, to go to uh, Colombia. Because basically I was trying to, I sold all my stuff to, to save up money, but then I also thought, okay, cool, I needed to, um, to release some debt. So, you know, Bali's the best place for me to, to step, go to in my current state. Yeah, it was all, all great. Um, and then Omicron happened and uh, things just took a little bit of a turn and the whole world shut South Africa out and then I was just waiting in limbo now, you know. I had sold all my stuff, um, uh, I moved in with my mom and, and then I was like in this limbo state and I just needed to get out, I just needed to go. And then I saw Thailand was, was opening, I was like fuck this, I'm, I'm going, I'm, I, I, don't, I don't care, I, I haven't even planned for Thailand, I was like let me go. So. Yeah, it was, it was quite an emotional thing because the thing is, throughout this whole time, uh, you know, I kind of, in a way, um, forgot the reason why I did this whole thing, you know. The whole reason why I did this is because there was a period of time where um, I had uh, COVID and uh, my, me, um, you know, I've gone through flu and stuff like that and that affects me. but. The thing is, there was a certain night that I uh, was struggling to breathe and uh, it was like really, really terrifying for me. Uh, and the one thought that I, I had was like, you know, I could die uh, tonight and uh, I have not even done a fraction of what I really wanted to do in life. And so that's when the wheel started turning. That's when I decided to uh, to go on this mission, but little did I know that um, things were going to happen the way that they did, you know. Um, from selling my, my things, uh, I realized that I had quite an attachment to things. Um, all of these things started to shape how I'm living uh, right now. So yeah, uh, long story short, went to, to Thailand. Um, when I was in Thailand, um, I realized that I, I didn't even know what to do because as soon as I landed there it was like this whole thing that I've been waiting for and then I was like okay cool I'm here now so I'm like um okay what do I do so I started to like you know roam around um, Phuket Island and um I realized that it, it, you know I don't really need to do a lot um over there because it wasn't really my prime destination but it got me to this point where um I started to feel that, okay, I'm traveling alone right now. There's a lot of points in time where you feel alone, you know, and this is the thing that um, now I, I, I knew that I needed to conquer about myself is because I realized at home, I never um, got to know people uh, as much as, uh, as I would have liked to. I was really recluse, stuck to my, uh, my small group of friends. And um, yeah, that was the beginning of this whole long, uh, this, well, this journey that, that I'm currently on. Um, I realized that, okay, as much as this was something for me to explore um, the world and see different types of things, um, for me, it was something of uh, more personal, more deeper than that, to say that I'm working on, on myself, actually. You know, because back home, I, I never really got to do that. Um, I was, a lot of the time, um, it was all lost in me supporting and helping my family out and, and all of that. And I never looked after myself. This is the part that actually allowed me to do that. And within um, this now, I've decided to myself, okay, cool. So you're going you're gonna to start learning about yourself now. You're going to embrace the things that you like. And... One of those things is my, um, you know, my filmmaking, my creative side, you know, and 
that is why I started to push myself now to say, okay, um, there in Phuket, um, since I landed there and it was like halfway in the month, I'd never even taken my camera out of my bag because I was still have that fear. That's probably why I became more of an editor than a filmmaker, like, you know, the actual guy who actually goes and pulls, because it's so easy to be behind, um, you know, the edit suite. You get the footage and you do your, your thing and you're like there, you're in your own zone, you know. Now I'm out there and I have to get the content and now I'm like, I can't, you know, I had a lot of anxiety that I had to conquer in order to, to go out there. I mean, even just to go walk out the street and start, you know, taking pictures, you know, just because I like street photography, I've got a fascination about it, especially the, the black and white kind. But then when it's time for me to do it, I'm like, ah, you know what, you know, it's still, it's still pretty harsh, the sun outside, let me go a bit later, you know, and then later it's like, ah, oh, I just missed the, the, the golden time, so maybe let's do it tomorrow, and then I start procrastinating, but then I realized that through this procrastination, uh, it started to impact me negatively, so that's why I, uh, I decided to start doing these things of just throwing myself out there, so I took my camera out, I just walked, and as I say, just walk with your camera. Even if it means that you don't take a single picture, start getting used to that. Um, those are the things that I'm trying to do, right? And yeah, um, I'm starting to learn more about myself. And uh, now, <laughs> after that, coming to, to Bali, yeah, it was quite an interesting experience because now I got into that point that, okay, cool, I'm finally going to the place that I... I've, all, I've, you know, I've been preparing for mentally, financially, all of that stuff, right? Doing the research, watching all the, the, the countless YouTube videos, um, reading different articles. Uh, I'll never forget the night that I got to, uh, to Bali. It was, it was quite a, a, a weird one because it was at night. Give me a second. Yes, yes. I'm going to cook. Yes. So I have a lot of questions to ask. Yes. Okay. And so I'm going to ask if you can keep your answers shorter. Yeah. Because we're at like seven I for, minutes. I forgot to actually lead off with that. I say that I ramble on oh, <laughs> for yeah. a bit. So. <laughs> we already knew this. It's, <laughs> so, it's, it's good. It's good. Um, but I have a lot of questions to ask. And I think I only asked you one question. Yeah. And it was so. just like, just a cheeky little like... <laughs> What? Um, yeah, so you're gonna need to do that a lot more with me. Okay. So, okay, yeah. just you know, because because when people are silent, I just go on and on and on. So you need to be like, okay, cool, great, thanks for that. And yeah, well, you said a lot of amazing things. Um, but some of the questions that I have, obviously, you, you don't know what question you're gonna ask. Yeah. But some of them are about the things that you kind of go into, and I kind of want to okay. get the opportunity to ask you them. Hundred percent. Um. So I know I'm gonna have to cut a few times yeah. but if you can keep that in mind to just like mm -hmm. just even if it's being like super direct at times yeah you know 100 percent. No. and then we can like we got more places to go okay All yeah right. cool All cool good? hundreds yeah okay um so where are you from whereabouts in south africa uh joburg <laughs> 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 Just, that was so good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, where, where, okay. Where in, in okay. Uh, so yeah, in Johannesburg, more specifically, uh, in uh, the the east region. They, we just call it the east. Okay, but this comprises of Edenvale, um, the likes of uh, Midrand, where I eventually started to stay on my own, and Centurion. That's basically where, where my my mom lives. Yeah. Beautiful. And how old are you then? What age? 34. 34. Mm. Okay, so you would have been a kid then. You would have been maybe like 10 or something when the apartheid. Yeah, was. yeah. So uh, I was, yeah, I was actually still like very, very young uh, when, when the peak of the whole apart apartheid thing happened. Um, I mean, there's even stories my mom used to tell of her running away from bullets with my older brother in, you know, in a, in a belly and things like that. So it's, yeah, it's still, it's a very, still very rich, um, that whole history behind us. Yeah. But yeah, I was, I was pretty young, but I still did feel it even whilst I was growing up. Maybe for people who don't actually know what that is, mm -hmm. could you maybe explain a little bit about, um, what the apartheid is and, um, yeah, 
be interesting to know some of your experiences during that time. Mm. So, really, in a nutshell, um, uh, apartheid, well, we call it apartheid because it's, it's an Afrikaans term, right? Um, it, it, it's, it's basically r racial uh, segregation, basically, right? In a nutshell. Um, white people are supposed to stay in, um, you know, where white people are supposed to be and black people or non-white people are supposed to be put in their own um, place. So that even that went so systemic into the fact that uh, people lived, the, there were only white only areas and like the place, the townships were the places where, you know, black people were like Soweto, Alexandra, Kuguletu, all of those places. That's basically where black people were, um, were put. So, uh, if you think about it in, in that way, growing up, your your whole um, your world is different, right? Um, when I grew up, when I was still very young, very very young, um, I mean, my mom used to uh, she used to be in like in, in the makeup um, industry. I mean, she still dabbles in it now, but. She, when, when she was very young, she, she did that and she got to travel um, around the world, you know, um, promoting different brands and stuff like that. Uh, you know, young black entrepreneur, obviously back then it was you like a thing, you know what I mean? Um, and I used to stay with my grandfather, my grandparents in, in Soweto, in Orlando, Orlando East in Soweto. And one thing I remember from those times is that it's, 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 it's funny now, but when you think about it, it, it wasn't really that funny in, in retrospect because we used to, I used to um, play with my friends there by my grandfather's place, right? And right down the road there, because my grandfather's place was on the corner of a very busy road. Anyone in, uh, in Soweto will know Muki Street, you know, it's a very long road. And we used to play around there and every single I can't remember which day it was, either Saturday or Sunday, we'd always see this white man dressed in a, in a, in a, in a black uh, coat and with his briefcase just walking um, um, around. So he would walk to the train station um, over there. And I mean, to us, for me, it was like, what on earth? You know, look at this guy's skin color initially, you know? But then over a while, my friends would we would run around and we'd say, Mlungo, Mlungo, and we'd just chase him. Mlungo means white man in, in, in Zulu. We'd just chase around with him. And I mean, you know, that was the first time that I actually experienced a white person, <laughs> you see. So if you think about it, that's, that's the world that a lot of black people actually uh, grew up in, you know. Um, a few years later, my mom uh, comes back from her traveling. I moved in with her. Uh, she uh, and then yeah, I'll, she started uh, moving me more into the into the suburbs, and basically then the suburbs are more mostly uh, white people. <laughs> so yeah, growing up in that. Um, so as you can see, I, I went from a predominantly black you know neighborhood to a predominantly white neighborhood. So now my shift, uh, the, my mental um, you know the way that I see the world starts to shift again. You know. So it's an interesting way um, experience that I had because uh, now I'm instead of only being with black people, I'm only with white people, <laughs> you know. And when you grow up in that way, uh, even my mom was like, you know, as soon as we brought you to the suburbs and the schools in the suburbs, you know, your your Zulu just went <laughs> straight out the window, and you were just speaking only English because I could I had to speak only English. I so mean, was it like was it just? Um literally all white kids and you were the only black one yeah. in your class like in your schools and everything yeah in, in my class there was just it was just me um but then over time it would be like me and like a, a colored kid me and uh, an indian kid would be the only people of, of color ah um, so you, you actually say colored you say it, black yeah yeah mixed race ah. yeah so mixed race we you know it's it's strange because like uh, uh, some american people take offense when i when i call you know mixed race people colored because for, for us mixed colored people are colored even in uh, officially in documentations that you have you say colored black white colored you know so that's we call them a mi uh, we, we don't call them mixed race we just call them colored <laughs> you know that's basically how how we grew up you know um so yeah i was i've i got used to being 
the only um, black kid, you know. A, a lot of my friends growing up were just only uh, white people, so I never saw that. Um, so growing up in, in, a, in a, an environment like that, you don't see things as being like racist, you know what I mean? Mm. There's certain undertones, certain things that people say that you just don't, you don't see. Uh, sure. You know, because you get clouded around that, you know, everything becomes the same. It's like the, the like a, that whole uh, frog in, you know, boiling water type of thing. When things, because uh, as you're growing up, things just move slowly in that way, um, that it doesn't become a shock to you that, okay, cool, there's some racist shit going up over yeah. here, you know what I'm saying? So, what would you say were some of the challenges that you faced then? Oh, yeah, being invited to uh, my friend's. Houses was um, was an interesting one. Some parents were very welcoming. Some were not so welcoming. They would act like they are welcoming, you know, um, to a certain extent, to the point that I would go and play with my when I'm. It's time to you know after school, we we hang out with our friends, and my friend is like, no, come through to my place, and then we, we you know we'll play video games and stuff. Um, I wasn't a lot of the time. I was not allowed in the main house. Uh, it would be like, you know, they would move the, the, the video game. My friend would have to move his video game into another place. Sometimes we, I couldn't even get in there, you know, uh, into his place. He'd be like, no, uh, he would make up something like, no, my mom's busy or something like that, you know, and then we would go somewhere else. Sleepovers were also a bit of a, a interesting one as well because, like, I mean, there's certain things that I, I would be accustomed to, like, uh, you know, for me, you know, it, it uh, you know, the whole thing of eating at, at a dinner table, you know, I never experienced that. I never had like a grew up with a dinner table. It was always like in front of the TV, you know, as a, as a family and whatnot. And eating that and having and starting to see that other people are different <laughs> in the way that we, it was, it was quite weird in that way. But the things that you only see th here, um, it's only in, in hindsight when you realize these things. So the things that they would say would be like, you know, you talk English so well. Um, where did you, you know, some of them would ask me, you know, where did you go to school? Where did you grow up? You know, and uh, it became the thing of, okay, well, I'm ex uh, because the way that they would treat me would be different to the way that they treat like um, their helpers and stuff like that because when I go there I mean as a black person in the way that I grew up you know you, you, you're taught to respect your elders doesn't matter, matter who they are and what profession they are you know so obviously the older lady who was helping there I would call her it means like you know um, a sister like a, as it's a form of respect so and obviously if she's in, in an LDR I would call her umam you know so, like, uh, 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 you know, you would call it with a name like um, Sis Beatrice or, you know, Mama, Mama Faith or something like that, right? So I used to do that and they would look at me like, why are you calling them like that? You know, they're not your mother, you know? And I, I, I couldn't, at that time, couldn't ex uh, explain it. But then I also realized that, you know, you become a, the right black person <laughs> you know the acceptable black person as you as you in these groups right um, if you're not that then uh, then you like you know lower so they'll treat you with some form of respect because you fit into you know the narrative of their world right so you you, you dress a certain way you speak a certain way right if I didn't speak the way that I do in terms of the way that um, you know, my, how fluent I, I, I would speak English and in the accent that I spoke, I wouldn't have been accepted. I mean, a lot of, I've met a lot of people who, black people who are very intelligent people, but then they're perceived as being, um, you know, more, more stupid, I guess, right? Or lesser in the intellectual world because of the way that they speak, you know, their accent, they can't pronounce certain things in English. These are the things that I, I, I grew up in, and I didn't realize it when I was in that world. Yeah. Wow. Mm. So, when did you actually get into traveling now? Because you mentioned that your mom was um, a makeup artist and mm. she traveled the world. Mm. Um, did you travel with her at times? Or? No, quite, quite, uh, <laughs> it's quite a weird one. 
I only really started to travel when I actually got my uh, my first job. Uh, it was at an, an uh, at an airline, you know. So I would only hear my mom's stories about her traveling, about her going to New York and uh, describing how it is in New York and how the people are and stuff like that. And uh, and my older brother worked for an airline as well. He worked for an airline for I think like almost ten years, you know, for South African airline. So those that those were my my references in terms of how the outside world is you know seeing pictures of my brother and my mom you know in these different places so to an extent that that painted that picture in my head but i really did want to travel you know and it's only when i yeah i, I started to work for the for the airline that it started to grow a bit more um and then over time in the airline i went from being at the call center in, into being, you know, the IT guy, you know, into the IT department. And that's when I really started to travel because I was sent uh, to the various uh, places because they they had, like, obviously points at the different airports in South Africa. Um, and sooner or later, I started to go um, out of the country. You know, my first trip um, out of South Africa was Zambia. We went to Livingston. Um, uh, I'll always remember that because, obviously, it's like a milestone, you know, thing, you know. Um, and actually using my passport, you know what I'm saying? This is these are the things that um, that I remember. And um, from then onwards, it just uh, yeah, I uh, started traveling around Africa, you know, uh, going to places like Kenya, uh, you know, Mombasa, you know, uh, Zanzibar a lot, um, Zimbabwe, and stuff like that. But then obviously, you know, you start to get to these places, and you're like, okay, well, there's another level, you know. I need to get outside of the continent. And I hadn't, I didn't get to do that uh, up until a long time, actually, after that. After I left the, um, uh, well, not really, I left, but then the company also folded, uh, One Time Airlines. And that was, um, they folded in 2012. And it's only up until 2015, actually. No, tw yeah, 20, 2016, actually, I think. 2016 or 2017, actually. I can't remember exactly the years, but I I just accepted, it was so random, I accepted a, a proposal from, a, like, a, you know, an invitation from a friend of mine. Um, he was starting out his whole traveling thing um, back then. Um, so, yeah, I get a message from now saying, hey, dude, do you want to go to India with me? And it's like laughing emoji. So I'm like, <laughs> yeah, sure, let's do this, you know. So I'm like, in, in that perspective I was like thinking to myself that's not me that's not you know the type of person that I am but then over the years I start to feel like that maybe that is part of me so yeah so I said yes I said yes to him let's go to to Mumbai and I uh, I just thought you know you know YOLO let's just go you know we went it was quite an eye-opening experience I will not lie to you um, I didn't expect to feel the way that I did about India um, you know, when I was there, I actually started to appreciate my, my place at home, the way, you know, the, the life that I live at home, you know, because you see how people live over there, you know, the gap between the haves and the haves not, it's, it's quite, it's quite, quite large. Um, coming back from there, it was quite an experience seeing other people and that, just the fuel, the just light, lit that fuel, you know, and, and then I went to, you know, after that, I was like, Okay, um, let's let's do this. We started doing a lot of lot more of travel in in South Africa. You got like itchy feet. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Once you get that travel it's like, it, it, it hits you it and it just up. builds up, you know. For sure. um, so is it? Would you say that it's common for South Africans to travel, or? Not really. Not really. Um, look, there's there's there there are. A large amount of South Africans that do travel, uh, I will not lie, there's quite a big amount. But there's also quite a lot of people that don't um, travel, you know? A lot of people that are just either just content to living the way that they live. A lot of people don't even get out of Johannesburg, you know what I mean? Um, they don't do that. But the thing is, um, for them, I, I guess, I used to think that, why are you doing this to yourself? Why are you... You know, shortchanging yourself in life like that. But some people just are content. You know, um, that's what I've have seen as I've been interacting with people. Um, but look, a lot of us in in South Africa, um, we don't 
will will only travel if it means to go to somewhere like as in like home you know emakai you know what i'm saying like the homelands basically you know so a lot of people like in joburg you know migrated from um from kwazulu natal and um you know came come to came to joburg for work you know what i'm saying so they come from all of these other places from Potcher Strong, from, you know, d a different other places to work in Johannesburg. But then, mm -hmm. you know, that's where th the travel element comes to them, right. you see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, see, you see what so, I'm saying? Okay, so in regards to traveling now, are you still work, you said the, the airline company folded, so yeah. are you now working with another airline? Or, no. like, how, do you, how have you been able to sustain traveling since 2012? Okay, so when I left... Uh, when I was in um, the airline industry, I, I left to go work in another IT company, and for a, a period of time, then I didn't travel. Right? It was about, you know, give or take the five years that I didn't travel. Right? Um, but then uh, it started to, um, you know, to those wheels started to turn again when when my friend now started to travel. You know, and then he started to invite me out on these road trips and stuff like that, and. Um, and that's when he started to also just, um, you know, uh, dabble into, you know, videography, you know, we'd record on our phones and, you know, and put it on like Instagram and things like that, you know, and uh, it just started to build uh, from there. But I think for me, I, I actually quite like the way that it's, 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 it's come through. But um, actually, wait, what was the question again? <laughs> I'm actually weird off. <laughs> I was asking how are you able to sustain, sustain uh, myself, right? Like so, you work online, so, you, because um, you're an editor and, and uh, yeah. filmmaker, right? Yeah. So, is that how you? So, actually, no. Uh, I, I feel, see myself as living sort of two lives, you know? I, in, uh, as a profession, I am um, in, in IT. Um, I'm actually sort of like, an infrastructure, um, you know, consultant slash like security analyst, you know, um, that's basically ha has been my main life yeah, throughout, right? The film and photography side of things was a side thing, you know, it's been a side thing and that's the thing. I mean, I've, I've gone into the whole industry of IT and everything and, um, that's basically how I'm, I'm paying the bills, should I say. Even now, I'm still working remotely. The company allowed me to, to, to work remotely and, um, and, and do the traveling thing. But yeah, um, I'm trying to see how I can also pay more attention to my creative side. And that's also the reason why I did the traveling, you know. Yeah, for mm. sure. And so how do you keep those creative juices flowing whilst working in this, I guess, nine to five? It's a good question. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure that out, um, but it's it's more of a of a mental uh, shift that you have to do. Um, I'm starting to put different routines uh, in my in my day. Starting to change my routines because when I was in South Africa, I had a certain routine, and then I'd like you know go to, to work, and then later on just to work on my creative side. But the thing is, is that now I'm able to do that um, in my day right and then by the time that the work they start in south africa it's a bit later so i get the morning to work on on my creative stuff but i'm still trying to figure the the, the routine out because as you would tell the worlds are so totally different right i'm not i'm not actually um when i'm in my it job i, I can't think of things in a creative way there's like you know there's a formula for this and this and that right but then also in my creator side, I need to sort of like move away from that um, heavily structured approach to things because on the creator side, it's more about, you know, the feeling and, and how that actually, it's more intuitive in that way. So it's a mental shift that I'm still trying to figure out, you know, mm. Mm. It, it, it is, it's difficult but, uh, because of the fact that I've been in, I've grown up in that IT world for such a long time and I haven't embraced my creativity side. Now that I am doing it, it's like, okay, what do I do now? You know, yeah. how do I do this? Because, you know, now you're here, Mlingo, you've, you, you've done what you, what you wanted to do. So now, where to from now? And 
I'm trying to figure that out actually now. Yeah. It's exciting though. It is. So it how is do you actually nice. stay motivated then? Uh, I stay motivated um, by actually, uh, I'm, I'm starting to, before I thought I would be motivated by watching other uh, creators and what they do, but then after a while, you start to feel like you are inferior to them because now when, when they, you see like this, this crazy stuff that they're actually doing, it's like really like this, you know, they like filet mignon the, the, the whole thing, you know? And when, when you, and then you're like, yeah, I'm motivated now. I want to do that shit. And then when you, you start to do it and you see your side, you're like, man, this, my stuff is really not that good, you know? And I've had to um, find other ways of, of you know, uh, motivating myself, right? But then there's certain hard questions that you have to ask yourself and certain th realizations that you have to get to is that your stuff, yeah, it might not be as good as theirs, right? Um, but it doesn't mean that it's going to stay that way, you know? And it's up to you to, to um, you know, be more faithful and true to yourself to say, you know, I'm going to do the best that I can actually do with, with, what I, with the skill set that I have, right? And if it's, if people d compare it to someone else and it's not that great, then so be it, you know. Um, that's basically the way that I've, I've been starting to look at things. And now I'm like following the people that I, uh, uh, I admire because of the way they make me feel uh, when I look at their art. And um, instead of now looking at things on a technical perspective, I want to replicate the feeling uh, more. And that drives me, the feeling is the, the thing that drives me. I didn't realize that before. And it's only now that I'm through, through doing this that I, it's the feeling that, that actually drives a lot of things. Even feeling is the thing that drives me to actually go out and take street um, photos like photography, you know, because I'm in that mood, you know what I mean? And I know a lot of people are like, oh, don't, you don't only do things because you feel like doing it, you know, yada, yada, yada. But I'm just going with how it works for me right now, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what advice would you give to, let's say, a little Bilingo, uh, maybe, yeah, just some like younger people or could even be older people who are um, feeling a little bit stuck, they want to travel, they're seeing people like you um, traveling the world, they're seeing people like you, um, you know, as a um, filmmaker, photographer. Like, what advice would you give to those people who just kind of the feeling stuck and just want to get started? Okay, well, first and foremost, I would actually say is that uh, you just need to take uh, an account of your current um, situation, right? Be it, um, you know, relationships, um, money, uh, you know, where you are in life right now, right? And you, you, you take an account of that and you take an account of where you want to be, basically. And, you know, the thing is, is that it's not about that where you want to be. It's, it's that in-between thing. That's the thing that's going to really give you joy. You know what I mean? Um, that's what I've, I've, I've realized even, you know, because as soon as I got to Bali, I didn't feel anything about being, you know, in Bali. I felt like, shit, I've come through this whole way now. And now where am I going to go, you know? So concentrate, let those, those feelings be the things that drive you, right? And then you're going to have to start making some, some um, uh, should I say, tough decisions, right? Um, for me, I, I won't specifically say that this is going to work for everyone. But for what I had to do is I knew myself. This is why I say you need to have a bit of a check-in with yourself. Because I knew myself that... I like to procrastinate things or I'd like to say that I want to do things and then start pushing them away because I'm still in that safe zone. So what I had to do is that um, I had to actually sort of burn my boats, right, in order to take on the island, right? Because then that's why I sold my stuff, I moved out of my apartment, I gave my little brother my car, all of that. Because once I was in that state, there was no going back, right? Once I was in that state, I had to move on. I had to move forward. I had no choice but to move forward. This is, that's how it worked for me. But it, it's not necessarily going to work for, for, for everyone else. But the thing is, for me, I was like, you need to, I, I did that because that's, 
type of person that I was. And I had to do a check in with myself to say, I know that I, I say things and then I want to do things, but then it doesn't materialize. And that's the thing that I, that I was like, okay, cool. So this is the thing you need to work on about yourself, you know, because this is the thing that's, that's stopping you from, from getting that. And that's, that's the thing that I would, I would rather say to people because I don't like saying to people, you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do this, you have to do that, because I know that everybody has uh, different circumstances, you know, they have different environments. Other people that I were watching on YouTube, they were like, yeah, no, I, I sold all, all my things and then I just decided to just go and I just went. And for me, that didn't really work out the way that it worked for them, because for me, I still had people who depended on me, you know. Uh, my mom de heavily depended on me. Uh, you know, I've got certain structures in, in my family that that I, I, I couldn't really stray away from. So I had to work around that. You know what I mean? But there's a lot of there's a lot of things that people have that are different to other people. And I feel like when people say on the internet, you just need to follow your dreams and just go at it. It doesn't work for everybody else. You know, that's that. It kind of I don't know. It kind of pisses me off when people just blanket approach things like that so for me i that's why I say to, to people just um, you're gonna need to do that check-in with your with yourself and and see how badly you really want to do it because if if you really want it that badly you'll make a plan mm. you'll make you'll a way it. you'll do it, make it work. You, you'll make it work <laughs> you know what I mean so there's yeah. no approach to say hey go do this or the thing that I've written down to say oh this works this doesn't work um, sure. It's yeah. actually kind of refreshing hearing that because I think a lot of the times, actually I'm that person who's, who's <laughs> like, I'll just get up and go, but I'm also 27, single, and so, um, yeah, yeah, it doesn't work for everyone. So, yeah. what are you trying to accomplish right now, Melinda? That's a very good question. <laughs> um, right now, what I, what I want to um, accomplish is, um, let me just say that this, I want to get to a point that I wake up in the morning and um, I walk into doing something that I feel um, gives me a bit of more of a purpose and, and gives me a bit more of a fulfillment in, in my life. And as much as I, I, I've been in the uh, IT industry and there's a lot of love that I have for, for, you know, for the work that I've done there, but sooner or later, uh, things are going to have to change, right? Um, and that's basically um, what I'm trying to prove to myself to say, okay, you know, you, you say you want to do the, um, you know, to spend a bit more of time in your creative space, but you, you need to be truthful to yourself and you need to know that is this really what I want to do, right? But you can't know that without giving it a chance, you know? And this is why I'm doing it this way. I don't know if I'm going to be a, a be like a freaking videographer for the rest of my life. I don't know if I'm going to be in IT for the rest of my life, right? But I used to think that people who, who keep doing, hopping from different things, doing different, um, going, like doing this thing, and they know they're doing this thing now and then that thing. I thought that they just didn't know what they want to do in life and they were just like floating around in life. I need to realize that I'm kind of <laughs> those people myself. And it's actually a good thing because a lot of people will stay in one lane and they're still unhappy but then they're scared to actually go um, across the other lane. I'm scared to do this myself on the videography side because the IT side is very clean cut you know you know in order to get there you know you need to do one two and three and four and you will get there on the creativity side of things it doesn't work like that you know there's a lot of unknowns that and that's the thing that I'm trying to conquer so I want to be in a space that I I'm doing that type of thing and growing um, you know within myself but also um, having that sense of fulfillment you know um, waking up in the morning and this is what I keep saying to people is that I I get that there's stresses with everything you do you're not always going to be happy with everything you do right and I'm not trying to say that I'm going to wake up in the morning and be like, yeah, let's go for it. You know what I'm saying? I'm fired up, you know, like your SpongeBob great pants with these feet up and, you know, doing that. No. Um, but I want to have, be in a world that the stresses that I have within 
or the ch- certain challenges that I have are, are not things that just bring me down, but are things that call me to action um, and to actually challenge them. So, yeah, I don't know if it's just the very clearest answer, but yeah, uh, that's, that's how, how I see things. Oh, yeah. yeah.